everybody welcome back to the channel welcome back to another video it is me it is i katleo from just katleo i'm so glad to have you here i'm so glad that you are here celebrating the channel celebrating the space this moment and being part of the family thank you so much to everybody who is here and if you are new here thank you so much for joining the channel and if you haven't subscribed please do subscribe to the channel there's a lot of content coming there's a lot of content that's already on the channel so binge watch watch on all of it be my guest please um, I don't feel the best I might sound a little bit nasally to you because I have been down and out honey I've been so so sick um, and I realized that okay I need to get these videos out irrespective of how I feel these videos need to come out um, and you guys are gonna see these videos in the first possibly also second week of January so it be like that sometimes it be like that sometimes so instead of drinking a drink I'm actually having a cup of uh, green tea in my Nespresso mug because I don't know it wasn't the best idea because I can't even hold it like this it's so hot today we're going to be talking about money in relationships the topic of money when it comes to relationships <sighs> It's a bit of a tricky one okay a while ago I actually uh, put on my insta stories I don't know where my phone is here it is okay uh, a while ago I actually put on my insta stories uh, for you guys to share what you know uh, money in relationships means to you is money important when it comes to a relationship share your story all of that so I've got all that on here and I'm gonna share some of your stories but before I get into that I feel like we need to talk about money the topic of money and how it plays such a huge role in relationships let's get into the video in reality let's talk about how money in relationships is a very important topic it's a very difficult topic and it's also a very difficult conversation to have with a partner now I'm not talking about you being with somebody who you know you just you don't really see a future with them you know you're not talking future you just you just vibing you know you're gonna you're gonna see where it ends up you're gonna see what happens between the two of you but there really isn't any rush or whatever and it's not really a committed relationship that's then that video is another whole entire different story this topic is about money and relationships and committed relationships if you are trying to build a future with somebody money is a very important conversation to have with that person so that's why that those are the people that I'm talking to right now okay what role does money play in your relationships not only that how do you view money as a person by yourself individually and together as a unit you need to kind of have those kinds of conversations of what is money how do we view money what is money to us as a couple right and for me I never used to think I, I'm, I'm not even sure I'm not even gonna lie to you I used to think that money isn't everything and I'm talking in context to relationships I used to think that money isn't everything look as long as you love somebody it's fine uh, we're gonna get through it together we'll figure out a way and then I got older and I realized I started seeing cracks in my relationships where where money was always involved so we couldn't get to do certain things because there was an issue of money or the person that you're with has so many um, debts to pay or expenses to handle and take care of that they can't really enjoy you in the way that they would like to enjoy you in terms of going out and taking trips and blah 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 and doing nice things like those small little things because money is an issue so for me growing up I didn't think I thought you know what as long as you love me it's fine but then you can't eat love how are you going to get uh, food you know on love how are you going to be able to move around or <clears throat> go go on picnic dates or do whatever on love you can't do that stuff on love alone you have to have money so it became very clear and evident and obvious in my case that okay money is a conversation that I need to have with this person whether I like it or not and 
it's a very, very difficult one. Facts are, it's a very difficult conversation to have with a loved one, but it's an important one and a necessary one, especially if you're in a space where you see that I'm going to be committed to this person. I want to be with this person long term. So we need to talk about where we are in terms of money, finances, and financial management. Facts. Just facts. So, okay, let me, let me, cup of tea, hang on. So one of the questions that I want to pose to you is, finances, how much do you know about your partner's finances? How much do you know about how much they owe, what debt, what expenses, what are they currently paying, credit cards, bond cards, um, student loans, um, tutoring loans, whatever it is. What are they currently paying in terms of money expenses that is coming out of their pocket and how much do they have to play around with? Now, here's the thing. It's really, really important to note that conversations with money are very, conversations regarding money are very, very difficult to have with a partner because you have to consider things like you have to approach it from a place where they, one, don't feel like exposed, two, they don't feel like you are encroaching on their personal space, three, you, you have to approach it in such a soft manner that they don't feel like um, they would lose you if they say something along the lines of, oh, I owe this, 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 this. But it's very important to have that kind of conversation so that you know as well, individually, what kind of relationship you are getting into with your partner or spouse, especially when it comes to money. So it's a very difficult conversation to have, but it's an honest one. And when you care about somebody, this kind of conversation could be very re rewarding to your relationship. It could be rewarding in the terms of trust and in terms of uh, loyalty and in terms of having conversations that are difficult, but at the same time are manageable, especially in your committed relationship. So money is really important to discuss, especially when it comes to conversations like loans and credit card expenses and uh, house expenses, home loans and car installments and all of that. These are really important conversations to have with your partner so that you know moving forward what you are going to do or what steps you're going to take together with one another to mitigate this financial situation. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that, oh, we're gonna help each other out, especially if you're not married, it's a little bit different, but if you are in a community, communicated <laughs> if you are in a committed relationship it's really important to have those kinds of conversations so that you can gauge what you can do collectively as a couple to help each other when it comes to financial management of your resources especially when it comes to money another thing you need to understand or what's really really important is that you understand how they handle their money so as to avoid things like conflicts and arguments and disagreements. If you do not know how your person handles their money and you are just living it up, you're enjoying, you're living your best life every time you're out and about, he's paying, she's paying the bill and you're not worried because you feel like, oh my gosh, my person seems to be financially sound and they seem to have their finances in order or, you know, my person is making guap. Okay, so we're spending a lot of money on trips and vacations and this and this and all of that. But meanwhile, you don't know where that money is coming from. You don't know that he's paying from his credit card or she's paying with their credit card and they've raked up a bill or an expense of 100K. And in that 100K is moments that you've had with them, like literally splurging and having a good time. So it's really important for you to understand how they actually handle their money because that will avoid a lot of arguments and disagreements going forward. Not only that, but it'll help you help them. If you can see that they're a little bit frivolous with their money, then you can help them and you can have ways in which you can discuss that, okay, we're not going to do this or you, don't buy that. Is it necessary? No, don't buy it then. If it is necessary, okay, can we do it this way or can we maybe pay this off first before we can get that? 
that kind of thing. You need to have those kinds of conversations with your partner so that they know that one, it's a safe space to talk about money and to talk about things like expenses and all of that. But not only that, you can learn from one another because the reality is there'll always be one person in the unit, in the relationship, in the duo, in the dynamic duo, who is more financially sound than the other. And because of that, you can't both be financially sound. That's, it's very highly unlikely that you're both financially sound and you know how to manage your money and all of that. One will always do it better than the other. So it's really important to have conversations regarding and involving money. Very, very important. So now personally for me, money would come into play a lot of the time in previous relationships where I would see that, okay, I'm the type of person who I don't mind going out. I don't mind spending money on good food. I don't mind spending money on trips. I don't mind spending money on this because I have a little bit of money left over that I can play around with. But then your partner might not have that. And because of that, the dynamic changes a little bit because yes, even though I do want to go on this trip, but if I'm going on this trip with you, then we need to come to the party, both of us, financially. And a lot of the time, it would be an issue. I could do it, but maybe they couldn't do it, or I couldn't do it at the time, and they could do it at the time. Then it becomes a really, really big um, issue to discuss, and money becomes a huge, huge issue. So it's really important to have those kinds of conversations. Um, and I feel like when you're in a marriage, it's even more important because then people start having joint accounts and all of that. And I'm not against joint, joint accounts. I just feel like have a joint account, yes, for expenses, but also have your own separate accounts, right? So in the joint account, you have expenses like mortgage, bond, uh, food, groceries, um, you know, expenses like if you both go to the gym, you throw the money in there and you have the account there so that both of you can use it beneficially to the both of you. Then there's separate accounts where you can do whatever it is that you want with that money without having to consult your partner about it. Do you know what I mean? Let me drink some water in my throat. <laughs> so I feel like it's okay to have a joint account and even as... A committed couple you don't necessarily have to be married because some people don't want to get married but they want to live with their partner for a long time or for forever but they just don't see marriage as a thing you can have a joint account where you both put money in there for things like electricity if you live together house expenses home expenses um, if the geezer decides to, you know, uh, 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 leak and all of that. If the geezer decides to leak, you both live in that house. So you can have that joint account to pay for all those kinds of expenses. And then you have your own separate accounts for, look, if you like clothes and whatever, use that account. If he likes cars, if he likes gaming, if he likes whatever, he uses that account. That kind of thing. So I could start seeing the different... So in my late 20s, I could start seeing the different dynamics of how, you know, money is such an issue, especially in a relationship. Because if one can't handle money and the other one can handle money, the one who can handle money will frown upon the one who can't handle money because they'll feel like, oh, you're wasting your money on this. You're wasting your money on partying and boozing up and this and this and this and this. Meanwhile, here I am trying to invest my money and do this and do this. So it'll change the dynamic. It'll cause arguments, it'll cause friction, and eventually, if it gets to a really bad place, it'll cause a breakup. So because if you don't want that, but you are open to having an honest, difficult, yet deep conversation with your partner, talk to your partner about money. Because then it affects both of you as a couple, but not only that, it affects both of you as individuals as well. So that's my take on money. That's my take on money in relationships. It's really, really important to discuss. Um, I'm going to go into your Instagram. Uh, got it. Okay. There we go. So I'm going to read out some of your responses in terms of uh, money in relationships. And I'm going to talk around that those points as well. 
Um, so the so what I had put up was money in relationships. Share your story or your opinion. And of course, some people came back and spoke about it. Uh, one person said, I don't know if it's a man or a woman or, the, you know. Uh, one person said, talk, communicate, open up and be transparent about money, debt, goals, etc. And I completely agree. You have to talk about goals. You have to talk about debt. You have to talk about money. Some people don't even know how much debt they actually have. The facts are they don't even know how much they actually owe because it's owing this and this and that and this and this. So collectively, they don't even know. They just know that, okay, I owe my car, I owe my house, I owe um, student loans, I owe this. But collectively, how much is that? And this is something that you need to share. You know, there are people who have debt and expenses well in the half a million range. You know, and that is wild. Lady, her story is that he left with a $53,000 half... Thousand dollar? <laughs> he left with a 53,000 rand hospital bill after he pretended to have our daughter on medical aid. Now, this is frightening. Because I feel like if you have a kid, it's really important. I mean, pretended to have our daughter on medical aid. So I'm assuming that the mother of the kid thought that their kid was on medical aid but wasn't, on the father's medical aid, but wasn't. And uh, this is frightening because I feel like the mom could have, could have done more to be sure that the child is on a medical aid um, and not just go off on hearsay, like, no, the kid is on my medical aid, it's fine, because then you wouldn't be left with something like this. Unfortunately, this is shocking, but it's a reality. Oh, that's frightening. Uh, another lady says, so my girlfriend has... Provider mentality. Every time she shouts at me for not telling her what I need. I struggle to ask anything from my partner because I've always done it myself. Am I wrong? Um, I am very, very hard to ask him. I do not, I don't know how. I have conversations with Balesa a lot where we talk about how do people even ask their partners for money. I can't do it. I don't know how to do it. Do I just say, hey, can you borrow me this, this, this? For me personally, I just, I can't bring myself to ask. I don't know how to ask. I literally don't know how to ask. Um, I will just probably have a conversation with the person and be like, yo, you know, I need to replace two of my tires and this and this and this. And this is genuinely a conversation. I'm not asking in style, right? I'm generally having a conversation like I need to replace my tires and each tire costs about 3k and it's going to be six. Oof, I don't know. I've got about four, blah, blah, blah. And then if they choose to help me out, great. But I wouldn't go and say, hey, I need to replace my tires. I've got 4k. Can you borrow me 2k? And then I can't. I just, I just can't. Um, and there are people who have provider mentality. I feel like I am one of those people, but not really in a relationship. I don't have provider mentality, but I, um, I'll go and I'll buy things and whatever. Once I'm comfortable and settled in the relationship, I'll buy things for the home or whatever and blah, 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 without necessarily consulting, but I don't mind helping. I think I'm very similar in that aspect. I just, uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm with her here because I don't, I don't uh, know how to ask for anything because I do everything myself. The only person I know how to ask money from is my sister. I'm just like, yo, Ndwana, I'll pay you back. Um, what's important for me is being with someone who knows how to manage their money. Correct. If you're with someone who's constantly out with friends, boozing it up, having a good time, blah, 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 and then can't make ends meet, come the seven. Come the 7 ta, 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 January, you're already broke. Or come the, 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 the 15 ta, January, you're already broke. Like to me, it just doesn't make any sense. If you can't manage your money, but here you are on the gram, you're out, you're with friends, you're living it up, <coughs> buying week, living it up, buying um, alcohol every weekend, blah, blah, blah. And then come mid-month, you have nothing? Ah, bro. Red flag. That's a big, big red flag. We have a monthly household budget, 
for shared expenses and the rest of the money is yours. That's exactly what I was saying, that you can have like a joint account for shared expenses like food and electricity and uh, rent or bond and that kind of thing. And then everything else that's get le that gets left over is yours. Mm -hmm. Don't always expect your partner to settle everything. Set up as well or you'll come off as a leech. I think, yes, I agree with this. Don't expect your partner to always cover everything. At some point, you also need to just chip in there. No, it's fine. This lunch, I got it. This dinner, I got it. This, I got it. No, let me buy this for your house or whatever. Or oh, you need this, this, this. You have to also show that initiative. I feel like if you don't show that initiative that I don't mind paying paying for this, you, you weren't raised well. Like for me, I, just, I really just feel that way. If you constantly, 100% of the time, expect the person to foot the bill for everything, you were not raised well. At some point, you need to, there must be that thing. You must feel like you are. Ah, let me at least let me try and do whatever. No, it's fine. I got this lunch to whatever budget allows for you personally. So if you want to take them out to lunch and the only lunch you can afford is um, Mythos instead of Aurum, then fine. Then fine, take them there and pay for it. It also shows them that, okay, at least, you know, even if I'm in a bind sometimes, you know, life won't stop because now I can't pay for this. At least she's also around to ensure that, you know, if I don't have money, she can take me out or she can buy me something nice or whatever, whatever, that kind of setup. So, yeah, I just also personally feel like you're, you weren't, you really weren't uh, raised well if you can't also initiate at some point. Next up. This lady says it, money plays a huge role. If we're being honest with ourselves, we're building a life here. We can't build from broken. And I, I completely agree. Now, the person that you've met had a life before you. You had a life before them. You've got expenses. When you join together, you still owe your car. You still owe 300000 on your car. That person owes 500000 on their bond. That you, They owe this, this, this. Credit cards, 50000 here, 30000 there, 20000 there. You need to have those kinds of conversations. And much as, as much as it's going to be difficult, but I really feel like you have to have those kinds of conversations with your partner. Be honest so that they know what they're getting themselves into and you know what you're getting yourself into. Very, very important. And then this is a question. Is it okay in a relationship to split everything 50-50, whether planning a vacation, buying furniture, etc.? Um, the two things are very different. Buying furniture, I would assume that you are living in a house together. You can split uh, uh, um, uh, the expenses there. Or say that, okay, for the room, this room that we are in right now, I will buy the furniture for this room. You buy uh, TVs for the other rooms and blah, 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 split it up that way. 50-50 um, in terms of vacations and all of that, I'm not opposed to that. I really am not. I don't expect my partner to uh, foot the bill for a 30,000 Rand vacation or for a 20,000 Rand vacation whatever 10,000 rand vacation i feel like it's crazy expensive to vacate in life okay doing trips are it's just expensive and if it's coming out of your pocket i mean it's expensive so if you can do it together unless it's a surprise vacation or they're celebrating your birthday or an anniversary and that's how they decide to treat you then fine but if we both want to go away at the end of the year Let's talk about it. Let's put money away. Let's take out 50-50. Or you tell me that you're going to pay for either your accommodation and I have to pay for everything else when we're there. Excursions, being out and about, eating at restaurants, all that kind of stuff, then fine. But there must be a way in which um, you are also chipping in. For me, I don't, I don't feel like everything must be covered by my partner. I, it's, it's, I, I, I don't think I would even allow myself to allow such a thing then there's a lady who said to the ladies don't help your man with anything trust that he got it no i can't i can't agree to that kind of mentality that's the kind of mentality that's just like really are you selfish are you being selfish or are you not just expecting yeah man is the provider he must do everything really so the clothes that are on your back he must pay for 
Your dentist appointments, he must pay for. The house that you live in, he must furnish. He doesn't live in it, but he must furnish it. Um, what Then what do you do? What happens with your money? So your money is just for nice things, nice time things. While he has to take care of himself and you. I, is he your father? I know. That's, that's the kind of mentality I would never push on this channel. Um, but yes, it should be discussed when entering into a new relationship. Relationships like that, where you expect him to foot for everything, they don't, in truth, they don't work. They don't work. Um, no borrowing of money in close relationships like a partner, siblings, friends. I don't know about that. I feel like if you, I, I wouldn't borrow, um, I wouldn't borrow a friend money randomly. It, it depends on which kind of friend. Uh, I know I made the mistake of there's someone, yeah. there's someone that I thought me and him were cool and we were friends and whatever. And he asked me to borrow him money and I did. And he didn't pay me back. And ever since I've kind of blocked, deleted him, removed him of all my socials and all of that and never spoke to him since because I thought, wow, I, I thought you and I were cool and I knew you would pay me back and he needed the money for something serious. Gante, I was duped. I was duped. Uh, but in a relationship, I don't see the problem with borrowing each other money. It depends on how much money you're asking your person to borrow you. Don't ask me for 10 thou. Don't ask me for 10 thou. If, and it de also depends on what you want to borrow the money for. So if, like I said earlier on, if my tires, blah, 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 I always have this notion. My father taught me this. The notion, <clears throat> the notion that bring something to the table. So if you're going to borrow money, if you want me to lend you money, if you're going to borrow money from me, um, uh, make sure that you have something. So if I say to my dad, Ish, I want to pay for my tires and all together the tires are going to, the two tires that I need to replace are going to cost 10K, I must bring something to the table. So I will say that, oh, I've got seven and they cost 10. I'm not just going to ask for 10,000 straight because I've got nothing. No, have something. Don't have zero and then expect the partner to foot the bill for, ah, gents, no. But I don't see it as a problem to borrow money from your partner. I don't. Being spoiled to now not knowing how to ask. I don't know how to tell my new boyfriend that I like being spoiled because I spoil back. I think this one you gauge. If you do something for him and you do it a number of times and you realize that they never do anything to reciprocate, then stop doing things for them. It's that simple. If you're going to buy them sneakers or take them on a holiday or blah, 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 or blah, 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 and they don't reciprocate that by spo spoiling you back in return, then just stop doing it. And if that's your love language, acts of gifting, gifting, what is it? Giving gifts. If that's your love language, don't expect it to be somebody else's. That's another thing we need to put into consideration. Don't expect it to be the other person's love language too. Because it might not be. And that's okay too, you know. Just gauge, gauge. If you can see that he's not, then stop doing it. Um, a woman should always have her own. It gives the freedom to choose you and walk away if you need to. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. There's nothing I can add more to that statement. It's perfectly put. I was earning a bit more than my ex, which resulted in me obviously having to cough up money for those random outings. And he hated it until we decided to put money in a savings account on a monthly basis. It helped, I guess, but will I do it again? I don't know, hey? Honestly, I don't mind. I was just in love, sis, but guys must just have money. It's a little bit difficult when both of you guys are on... No, no one is ever going to be on the same threshold in terms of we make the same amount of money. One's going to be here, one's going to be here. Maybe it might even look like this. And if it looks like that, that's a little bit frightening. I think if the gap is too wide, I, I don't see the relationship working. I really don't. I, I, I'm being honest. If the gap is too wide, if the gap is maybe like here, sure. 
But if the gap is like this, there's going to be a problem. This one up here who makes more money will feel like, will end up feeling used. Like, oh no, but I'm always paying for this and paying for this and paying for that and paying for this. And make it, I, I, when I want to go out, I make sure we go out and I foot the bill and this and this and this and this. Whereas that one might also feel, the one who's down here might also feel a little bit inadequate and might feel emasculated or might feel whatever, if it's a man and woman type situation and the woman is here and the man is here, they might feel a little bit emasculated. They might feel like, um, I can't, I'm not bringing anything to re the relationship and all of that. So when the gap is too wide, I don't see it working. Uh, but when the gap is like here and here, ah, you can, you can make it work in the relationship. Okay. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have, please do subscribe, click the notification bell. What else would you like to hear me talk about on Real Talk? Let's talk about it. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Have a great year. Good luck, all the best, and I'll see you soon. Bye.